Hello everybody, and welcome back to Mason Zero ASMR. Today I have another keyboard unboxing for you and review. Now if you've seen my channel before, you may know that I have I've done some keyboard videos, mostly typing, but a couple unboxings. And today this video is going to be a keyboard from Red Dragon. Now, if you've seen my videos before, you may know that one of my more popular videos is unboxing the Red Dragon K552, which I have right here. So this keyboard is a 10 keyless or 80% keyboard with blue switches. The blue switches are clicky and tactile. Good for gaming, usually. Uh, satisfying for typing, but pretty loud. Uh, it only has red LEDs, and it was about $30, $35. And I bought it as a keyboard for a secondary gaming setup for when, uh, well, not friends, but particularly one friend comes over, and my wife and I and him all game together. Actually, I don't know if you can see that, but the the D key is kind of shinier and smoother than the rest of the keys. So you can see the WASDs have been going. But for those who don't remember, here's what those keys sound like. Accessories first. First of all, it has a detachable magnetic 
rest rest, which is cool. It's just plastic, but it has a nice texture. We have a red dragon sticker. That's cool. The other cave did not come with that. plastic keycap puller and a metal, maybe that's also a keycap puller. I don't think that's a switch puller. So just two types of keycap pullers. We have a very nice, uh, maybe braided, uh, USB cable. This keyboard is USB-C, which was one of my requirements. I mean, USB-C wasn't necessarily uh, a requirement, but detachable was. Uh, but now I have several USB-C keyboards. This is going to be so nice just to be able to undo them and plug them in because I have pretty intense cable management so I can't just unplug and remove an entire keyboard very easily. And then this box feels mostly empty. <laughs> What's in here? It says mechanical gaming switches. Does this have replacement switches in it? Oh, I see. It's on the phone tray here. Nice. So we have a selection of switches. I believe the other Red Dragon keyboard may have come with this as well. Um, I guess has two of each switch, which is interesting.
size difference. This keyboard is a little bit wider on the left because of the macro keys. Uh, and on the top, it looks like the font is the same, which is fine. The font is fine. Um, but here, let's compare keys. It's a subtle difference. I think you can hear it. But this keyboard is a lot less metallic. If I really hit this. See, I don't know if you can hear that, especially after I probably have to turn that volume down a bit. But there's a lot of metallic, almost spring sound in this board. So it'll just be a better experience on this, I think. Let's go ahead and plug this in. I have my computer here. This is a pretty nice cable, but it's nice that I can use any USB-C with it. And actually, every USB-C cable I find, I can't fit into my HyperX Alloy Origins keyboard, but this looks like it could fit. It might be thin enough. <laughs> Which is kind of 
Interesting. customizable settings but oh my god that sounds like it would be awful to do with that software <laughs> uh, macros cool lots of lots of stuff this keyboard has a lot of stuff built in which is kind of crazy let's see if i unplug it plug it back in if the rgb resets i'd be willing to bet that it does okay no it did not actually so later on i'll figure that out okay Speaking of RGB, uh, it also has this RGB side lighting on both sides. Now this, I believe, is stuck on RGB. Let me... Yeah, that is stuck on RGB, no matter what I change it to. Is another reason why I think I might as well just keep this on regular RGB mode. So let's see, what can we do here? So these keys up here are the uh, the media keys, which are kind of rubbery. satisfying. Uh, okay, I think functionality wise, that's pretty much everything. Oh, the, the volume wheel. Oh my god. It's a little too close to the keys up here, but honestly, that's very satisfying to roll. I've never had a keyboard with a volume roller before. Honestly, that's pretty nice. I might have to look for that on my next keyboard. Although, to be fair, it's not something I use very often. Because um, I have my computer plugged into a set of speakers that have their own volume knob. So I just change that and leave my computer on 50% volume. And then when I'm wearing headphones, they usually have volume control on them. So I guess it's not that useful, but it's kind of cool. Anyways, um, I think we can get to some typing. Um, overall though, just based on this impression, I think I would recommend this keyboard. It was $55, by the way. Again, I got it with a gift card, but $55 I think is pretty reasonable for what you're getting. It'd be nice if it had software. Uh, oh, I should attach the wrist rest. Pretty strong magnets. Yeah, well, I can actually lift it up and shake it around. It's not going anywhere. Um, I've never had a wrist rest this big, to be totally honest with you. It's kind of nice. It, it is detachable, so... That is a strong magnet, so theoretically I could have it out here if that was more comfortable. See, it kind of is. Like if I was gaming. Yeah, that's actually pretty comfortable. But then, that is not as comfortable for me, actually. My wrist is kind of too low. So actually, I'd rather play with it unattached. 
attached, but it's interesting. I like the options. So, okay, let's do a typing test. That's probably why you're here. Overall, this keyboard is, is solid. Nothing too crazy going on. Uh, oh, can you guys see the RGB on my hands? I'm not sure if you can. Alright, let's do our typing. 